Hey everybody, I thought I would give a quick uh, demonstration on player creation for the History Maker baseball game. Um, this is something I have to do if I'm going to play my as played 1987 season with Atlanta because play.com does not create a player card for each and every single player that appeared during the season. Some of the lesser players who maybe only appeared in a handful of games do not get a card and that's, you know, to me that's reasonable. Uh, can't create a card for everybody. So we had a player creation uh, book, the how-to guide that I bought from play.com and that's going to show us how to uh, best create a player. So the first thing you need to do is download the Excel file for player creation. And we do that by going to the play.com website, click on free stuff, and then go down to History Maker Baseball and click on that tab. And then you're looking at Al Wilson's, Al Wilson's History Maker Baseball Player Card Creator. All right, that's for the Macintosh. So if you have a Mac, you would download that file. If you have Windows like I do, you would download that file. All right, and then once you download the file, it's going to look like this. You're going to have, it may show up as a README file with some instructions there a little bit, but the main part you want to get to is with the player, the data entry portion of the um, player creation cards. And the two players I'm going to create, and these are already created by play.com, so I'm going to see how close I can come to their ratings. The batter I'm going to create is Andres Galarraga, the big cat. He is a first baseman for the 1987 Montreal Expos. And the pitcher I'm going to create is Pasquale Perez. Oops. Pasquale Perez, also with the Montreal 1987 National League Montreal team. Okay, so that's where we're going to start from. And to get the player uh, stats that we need, or that, that I use, I go to retrosheet.org. And let's go back to the home page of Retrosheet. So when you get to the home page, I just click on this one for games, peoples, and parks. And I go to games, regular season. And then the season I need, 1987. And then the team I need, Montreal. Complete roster. And there's my first player to create, Andres Galarraga. So we're going to go down to 1987 Andres Galarraga. He is in his third year, so we'll keep that in mind as far as whether he's an icon or not. I'm going to click on the splits here to isolate the 87 season. And there you go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do for the batter, the first thing we're going to look at is his batting average. His batting average is 305. Now, according to the how-to guide, there is a cross-reference between batting average and player traits. In other words, when a player has a certain range in his batting average, if his batting average falls within a certain range, that makes him a hero. If his batting average falls a little bit lower, it may make him a, scrap, uh, um, a utility, things like that. So according to the book, 305 would make Andres Galarraga a semi-champion, which is what he is carded by Play.com. So that's obviously accurate. So he is a semi-champion. So we're going to go to, to Galarraga, and we're going to go to Semi-Champion, which is down way at the bottom. So you go to the average, and it's the drop-down menu. You choose Semi-Champion. There he is. All right. Now we need to check on his power. Okay. Andres Galarraga had 40 doubles and 13 home runs. So since his doubles far exceed his home runs he's not going to be listed as a home run king yet he has pretty good power because he had 40 doubles so he's not he's a little bit lacking on the home runs to make him a slugger but there's enough there to make him a semi slugger and basically to be a semi slugger you have to have two doubles for every home run which he certainly has he has that in in spades he has actually three doubles for every home run and on top of that, let's see here, slugger, okay, doubles, all right, so he needs to be in the 40 range, all right, there we go. All right, now, 
You see he has 40 doubles and 13 home runs. That's going to make him a semi-slugger. If he had 40 home runs and, say, 13 doubles, that might make him a home run king. But since the doubles far exceed the home runs, that's going to be a semi-slugger. So we'll make him a semi-slugger. You could almost argue him to be a slugger, but we'll so with only 13 home runs, we're going to go ahead and make him a semi-slugger. All right, the next thing you need to check on is his ratio to, of strikeouts to at-bats. And 127 strikeouts, that's an awful lot. So even just eyeballing this, looks like he's probably going to be a whiffer. But we'll check it out officially here. 127 into 551, that's about, it's less than four, I would say. Just doing it by my, my math in my head. So it's about one in four. So a one in four ratio, that's going to make him pretty much a whiffer. Um, but let's make it official here. And I want to get my little calculator out and actually do the mathematics here. 127 divided by 551. And that's actually, that's, uh, let's see. Actually, I got it backwards. Let's do it the other way around here. Let's do 551 divided by 127. All right, that's 4.334, basically. 4.34. Um, and the book says, basically, if you're around a 1 in 4, you get a whiffer. Now, Play.com gave him a semi-whiffer. I might give him a whiffer on this, but they gave him a semi-whiffer. It's kind of tit for tat. But that's how you determine whether he's a whiffer or not, or whether he's possibly a uh, has a good eye. You do the ratio between how many strikeouts per at bat. So he struck out a little over once every four at bats, and that's going to put him in the whiffer slash semi whiffer range. Next thing we look at is his walks, and it's the same ratio. So we're going to divide the 41 walks into the 551 at bats. That's a walk every 13 and change at bats, which is not very much. So that's going to make him actually semi eager. Because if he has a walk every 10 at bats, that's pretty normal. But he has a walk fewer than that. So, but it's not quite to the eager part. So we're going to call him semi eager, and that's what play.com did is make him semi eager. So they made him a semi whiffer, semi eager, semi slugger, and a semi champion. And the only thing I might have done differently would have been probably to make him a a full whiffer based on 127 strikeouts. But that's kind of being nitpicky, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now, like we said, he is in his third season, his second full season, his third season. So when they give talk about players' uh, experience and whatnot, the book talks about player experience. If he has one or two full seasons of service, he would be a semi-prospect. So in this case, even though it's his third year, it's only his second full year, so he will make a semi-prospect. If we were doing the 88 season, we would rate him neutral. But it's the 87 season, it's only his second full season. So we do, in fact, give him the uh, semi-prospect status. All right, running. He uh, he was stole seven and was caught ten times. So I might be tempted at that point to make him... Uh, well, you can't, there's no, no such thing as a, uh, well, you could make him stoic, I guess. However, however, if you make somebody semi-stoic, and actually it's done by stolen base uh, attempts per at-bat. So, let's take a look here, and let's see, he stole seven bases in 551 at-bats. Seven divided by 551. All right, basically every 1% of his at-bats, um, he is he got a steal. And in the books ratio, when he's a .01 ratio, that's neutral. So despite, despite the fact he got caught six uh, 10 times, that's not factored into the player rating. So that is why he is given a neutral as far as his running rating goes. Now as far as his defense, the play.com player card has made him neutral. But let's look at his player defense here for 1987. Let's see here. 
He had a 993 fielding percentage, which is pretty good. He led the league in putouts. I might be tempted to give him a semi-gold here, but uh, he did make 10 errors, so that I can understand certainly why they would rate him as neutral. I think uh, traditionally he had been considered to be a good fielder. Um, this one's borderline. I, I might have given him a semi-gold if I was rating him myself, but certainly there's no uh, real big error in making him neutral. So, if we go to the player card for Galarraga, we've determined that he's semi-champion, semi-slugger, and as we get over here to his walks, he is semi-eager. So we're going to make the semi-eager drop down. And on his strikeouts, he's a semi-whiffer. And again, I would have called him a whiffer, but they called him semi-whiffer, which is fine. And on his experience, he is a semi-prospect. All right, and everything else is considered neutral. So if we go to the player cards to see what his card would look like when it's all printed out, there it is. Now, well, it would help if I would spell his name right, wouldn't it? All right, let's go back and correct his spelling so we can make this correct. All right, now we go to his card. There it is, Andres Galarraga. He's a semi-champion, semi-slugger, semi-eager, semi-whiffer, and a semi-prospect. And that's exactly what the 1987 card from Play.com for Andres Galarraga looks like. So that's how you create a player, a batter. Now, let's look at a pitcher, playing, uh, creating a pitcher. And like I said, I pulled out um, Pascual Perez as an example. So let's go to Pascual Perez. You can see he's in his seventh He's in a sixth full season. First two, he only played two games in 1980, so it's a sixth full season. And as far as player experience, somebody in their sixth full season, they are a semi icon. Um, actually, no, I'll take that back. I'm not going to do Perez. I was going to do Perez before. Actually, the card I pulled out was Floyd Yeomans. So let me backtrack there. Floyd Yeomans. Let's look at Floyd Yeomans. Again, Floyd Yeomans, this is his third year, but his. Let's get to his pitching here. His third year, but it's really his second full season because he came in late in 85. So he's going to be a semi-prospect just like Galarraga was. So he'll be a semi-prospect. And now we need to go to his more detailed information, starting with his ERA. His ERA is 4.64. And according to the player creation guide, 4.64 falls in the range of being a semi-workman. And that is exactly how Play.com rated him as a semi-workman. So he would get that semi-workman quality. So if we come down to the player creation here, it's not should not be Pasquale Perez. It should be Floyd Yeomans. So Floyd Yeomans is going to get, his experience is going to be semi-prospect. And his pitching is going to be a semi-workman because of that ERA, which is 4.64. All right, now we're going to look at how often he struck out batters. What was his strikeout ratio? He struck out 94 batters in 116 innings pitched. Not quite one, one strikeout per inning, but very, very close. Uh, so if we look at his strikeout ratio, I could see giving him uh, a potential flash because they're roughly equal. And I guess you could use that term roughly pretty loosely. But I could see giving him a flash, and I could see giving him a semi-flash. I could see both ends of that. Uh, Play.com has made him a flash in their game in the 87 set. So I could go along with that. I, I don't see any uh, discrepancy there. I could also see giving him a semi-flash. I could see it either way. But they ruled him a flash, so that's what we'll go with. And then the next thing to check is his walks. His walks to innings pitched ratio. So... Let's see, he walked 47 batters in 116 innings. So that's one walk every 2.5 innings. So one walk every 2.5 innings is pretty normal. So that would be, he would be neutral as far as his uh, wildness or control rating. Now the book, or the play.com gave him a semi-control, semi-control, um, that's borderline because it's actually 2.47 innings, and the book says 1.3, 1 every 3. So that's kind of a borderline there. So I could, I maybe would have given him a, a neutral on that with semi-flash. 
but we'll we'll go ahead and allow uh, and and call it the way they called it. So we'll give him. All right, guys. Uh, sorry about the little abrupt ending there. My recording time of 15 minutes ran out right as I was finishing up Floyd Yeoman's uh, pitcher card. What I was saying is he had 47 walks and 116 innings, which is roughly one every two and a half uh, innings pitched, which is on the borderline between being neutral and having semi-control. The play.com player card for Yeomans gave him semi-control, so we'll go ahead and call it that. And that pretty much covers what you need for Floyd Yeomans. Now, as far as his batting goes, he is listed as, let's check his batting, let's check, because he was a regular uh, starting pitcher, so <clears throat> he should have a relatively decent amount of batting stats to look at. Most times you just default and give the pitcher the worst rating possible. Now, he did have a 150 average, so a 150 average obviously is not the worst you can have, because the worst you can have would be under a 100 average. So the 150 average as actually makes him a utility and semi sad sack. So he was given the utility and the semi sad sack quality. So let's go over and make this utility and we'll make this a semi sad sack. All right. Then we look at his power ratings as a hitter. He actually had a home run and two doubles. So he had a pretty good slugging percentage there and just 40 at bats. He had a home run. And the way they, uh, the book describes it, you extrapolate these small totals over 600 uh, at bats. So if you look at 40 at bats and you put that into 600, you know, that's quite a few at bats. So let's see here, uh, just rough figure here. Let's do a rough figure. And let's see here, 600 divided by 40 is 15. So that would give him 15 home runs and 30 doubles in a full season. So that pretty much you know, would come close to making him a slugger. But he's a pitcher, so play.com made him a semi-slugger. So we'll change this from scrapper to semi-slugger. And then we're looking at his strikeouts and walks. He did not walk at all in 40 at-bats, so he's obviously going to be considered to be an eager, uh, you know, eager batter. And then as far as his strikeouts go, he struck out 16 times in 40 at-bats. That's almost once every other at-bat. And when you get that ratio that high, he is considered a whiffer. So when we look at his player card, we're going to scroll down to Floyd Yeomans. And we can see that, I don't know why that line's in the way. Something I did caused that line to be in the way, I suppose. So... Let's go over here and see what we can do here. I'm not sure, like I said, there's something I did the file when I was messing around with this that caused that line to be there. But he was given a semi-workman flash and semi-control. I may have given him a semi-flash, but play.com gave him a flash. And of course a semi-control and a semi-prospect. I made him stoic as a runner. Uh, I think most pitchers are probably stoic as runners. He certainly didn't steal anything. You can make him neutral. Um, Play.com did make him stoic, same as me, so that matched. And his fielding, he was neutral. Most pitchers are going to be, unless you're Greg Maddox, most pitchers are going to be considered um, neutral fielders. But if you wanted to look at his fielding stats just to see what they were. Oh, I got the wrong button here. Let's go over here. He, uh, he had 16 putouts, 10 assists, and one double play, 1,000 percentage. But he only had, you know, like he said, 30, it looks like, uh, let's see here, he had uh, 26 total chances, which is not a whole lot to go on. So I'm not ready to call him Ozzy Smith yet or the second coming of Greg Maddox. So that's why they gave him the neutral rating as well. Now another aspect of playing these season replays, uh, besides making the marginal players, is figuring out when, you know, in the as play, you can get the lineups pretty good, but sometimes the transactions are not always prevalent. Uh, you can get the trades and things like that, but sometimes you don't always know when the player went on the DL or when he got sent to the minors necessarily. The uh, program I, you know, I like to use is Diamond Mine Baseball. That is my the old computer baseball game I used to play. 
And so in Diamond Mine Baseball, you can go in and look at the player uh, transactions per team. And I have the Atlanta Braves transactions up for 1987. And this is telling me that on May the 5th, which in my replay is coming up very shortly, that Ken Griffey was placed on the disabled list and they brought up or promoted Daryl Motley. So Daryl Motley came up from AAA Richmond and Ken Griffey was placed on the disabled list on May 5th. They also signed Doyle Alexander and demoted him, which means, I don't know, he didn't go to the Myers. I think he went to extended spring training. So he'll be on the team shortly, but not right now. They just they had just recently signed him. So, if I can get the dog to stop barking, we can keep going here. Somebody walks along the street, she barks. Oh, well, that's just the way it rolls. I'm sorry about that, guys. I couldn't control anything. I couldn't even pause this. I don't know how to pause this. So we're going to let it roll. So that's uh, pretty much what's going on with that. As you can see up here, Andres Thomas did go on the disabled list on April 20th. They promoted Mike Fishlin, but Mike Fishlin never appeared in a game other than to pinch run one time. So that's why he's not been used by me in the replay. And just recently, Paul Asemacher was placed on the disabled list, and I had to create pitcher Steve Zeem, or Zeem, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But uh, that kind of gives you a idea if you want to do these really strict as-played replays with the exact 25-man roster as of each game that's played, then my go-to source is this Diamond Mine Baseball uh, Transactions. And I have the Diamond Mine Seasons for almost every season um, from the 70s on up to uh, the late 90s. And then I picked it up again in the early uh, 2000s and like 2012, 13, 14, 15. So if anybody's playing a... Uh, play.com season from say uh, 61 uh, up through uh, 87 or up through 90 actually because I believe they have the 90 season then I have the transactions for all of those that I'd be more than happy to email someone if they needed them uh, if you're like I said if you want to be that particular about it replay baseball I'm, I'm sorry uh, history maker baseball is not really designed to be a blow-by-blow blow as played lineup with exact rosters and all that kind of thing just by its very nature it's designed to start you at opening day and then let the ebbs and flow of the game determine uh, maybe who gets hurt who uh, gets who you want to send down and bring up and so forth the only reason I'm doing the as played replay is to test the game engine to see how the game engine holds up over 162 games um, I've, right now, because I've finished 20 or so games, I'm about one-eighth of the way through. And uh, so that's why I'm doing this as-played lineup. I thought about possibly making uh, maybe a, a minor league season, uh, Eastern League, double, play, double A Eastern League season one of these days, if I get the nerve to do it or the time to do it. Um, Stats that you need to create the players in replay, and I keep using replay, in history maker baseball are not that in depth. And you know, if you have to fudge a little bit here and there, so be it. It's it's a lot of it's subjective ratings anyway. Uh, the only thing that's really the only two things on there that are really set in stone is the player's batting average, the hitter's batting average. That gives you a concrete uh, characteristic whether he's a hero, champion, sad sack, or whatever. And the pitcher's ERA, that tells you whether he's a workman, whether he's a star, uh, ace, and so forth. Everything else, you kind of have to tweak the numbers because no one's going to fall into that exact category. And what they suggest doing, if you want to create players that maybe only had, say, 100 to 200 at-bats, is you extrapolate their numbers of what they would have done over 600 at-bats. So if they had 200 at-bats, you just simply triple their doubles and triple their home runs, triple their walks, and triple their strikeouts. And that kind of gives you a, a guideline for how to use that to create those players. So this is just a quick down and dirty um, way that that I have found to 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 do that um, to create these players. And like I said, it's not it's not an exact science, but it's it's helpful for me when I want to uh, create players that are missing from the 
original sets when they're offered because they appeared in such few games. But it also could be used, um, you know, to create minor league seasons or whatnot. And if anybody has seen my video that I did on honoring the, the movies, I did a uh, set of Bad News Bears for the Bad News Bears movie, and I used this format and this the board. I'm sorry, the uh, this player creation file to create those players. And, you know, a lot of the I didn't have stats per se, obviously. Um, you knew who some of the better player what players were from the movie, like Kelly Leak and so forth. And you knew some of the not so good players were like, uh, you know, Ogilvy or so forth. Um, so that kind of, you know, just kind of fudge it a little bit. I also made it for, uh, the movie, uh, major league for the Cleveland Indians and, uh, their counterparts, the New York Yankees and Willie Mays Hayes and Pedro Serrano and those, therefore. So that was kind of fun doing that as well. So, I mean, the important thing is to have fun with it. That's what the whole game of history making baseball is all about. It's about having fun and having the game experience. It's not about, you know, being a stratomatic blow by blow and make sure that at the end of the season, your batter, uh, you know, is within 0.1 percentage points of his annual batting average. Um, that's not the purpose of the game. Uh, like I said, I'm just doing it as a, uh, to test the game engine out. And that way, after I play, you know, a full season through with the as played lineups, I can give a full report on how I think the game engine held up through a whole season. So that when you are playing either a one-off game or you're playing maybe a series or something like that, then you can hopefully, after this is over, I can come back and say, yes, this is a solid statistical game, even with just having the player characteristics and not the full statistics. So hopefully I can reach that conclusion, but we shall see. Uh, like I said, I do uh, want to thank Al Wilson for creating this file. And you can, like I said, you can also do it for umpires and you can do it for ballparks just the same. So that's it from here. I'm going to get back on my history maker season. I actually have to create a couple of minor players for the Montreal Expos to get them ready for my uh, next series where the Braves travel north of the border to play the Expos. So there's a couple of players in there, Razor Shines, and I think there's another pitcher in there that were not created by Play.com that I need to create. So I'm going to go do that. But I don't want to bore anybody with that. I've already gone through the two uh, player creations for a pitcher and a batter. And I wanted to pick somebody who had a full season stats to their credit so that you could see, you know, the process that you go through. And that's about it. If anybody has any questions, certainly leave them for me and I'll try to answer them the best I can. But uh, like I said, it's, his it's history record baseball. It's all about fun. You want to have fun. And uh, that's what this game is all about, is, is enjoyment and having fun. But it's always nice to try to be as accurate as you can when you create these players to get a better gaming experience. So that's it from here. I'll check with everybody down the road as we continue the Atlanta Braves 1987 replay. So long, everybody.